The queen is putting off an operation for a problem that is causing her a bit of pain for one particular reason, claimed royal commentator Angela Mollard. The queen's speech, which sets out the government's agenda for the upcoming months, took place in Parliament this morning. Royal commentator Angela Mollard claimed the Queen has been refusing to take time off to have an operation, due to Brexit. Speaking on New Ideas Royals podcast, host Zoe Burrell commented, We've heard the Queen needs an operation but she's been putting it off. Ms. Mollard said, That's right, she needs a knee operation. She's had an operation on her knee before but she does need another one. Actually at the Chelsea Flower Show earlier this year she talked about how it was causing her a bit of pain. It was back in 2003 she underwent a minor operation on her knee at the King Edward VII Hospital to remove a torn cartilage. But right now it's troubling her again and she's refusing to take time off to get surgery. The reason being is that, with the country in turmoil over Brexit, she doesn't want to step away. She feels very much that she is a sort of grounding and guiding force at the moment, particularly when so much is going on obviously with Boris Johnson and the multiple issues facing the British at the moment. So she keeps putting it off. Obviously she does need to have the surgery, who knows when it's going to be, but people say that her generation, her and people from Philip's generation, battle through problems and carry on, and she doesn't like to cause a fuss. But presumably if the knee did cause too much problem she would obviously go and have that operation. The Queen gave her 65th Queen's speech to Parliament and unveiled 22 bills proposed by the Conservatives. The Queen made the trip to the Palace of Westminster from Buckingham Palace in the Diamond Jubilee State Coach and was accompanied by the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. Prince Charles sat next to his mother as she gave her speech, with Camilla sitting to the left of them both. The Queen reiterated the government's promises to leave the EU on October 31. She set out the legislative agenda with a package of 26 bills including seven relating to crime and justice. These include legislation to keep serious criminals in prison for longer imposing tougher sentences on foreign offenders who return to the UK and provide better protection for victims of domestic abuse. The Queen said, new sentencing laws will see that the most serious offenders spend longer in custody to reflect better the severity of their crimes. The Queen started her speech by saying the government's priority has always been to secure the United Kingdom's departure from the EU on October 31. She added the government wants a new partnership with the EU that is based on free trade. There will be new regimes for fisheries and agriculture. The Queen also said the government's new economic plan will be underpinned by a new fiscal strategy. Prince Charles is first in line to the throne and will one day take over from Queen Elizabeth II. Could their latest public appearance together be a subtle hint Charles is preparing to take over from the Queen soon? Queen Elizabeth II attended the state opening of Parliament today to make her annual Queen's speech. The tradition-steeped annual event was filled with same pomp and ceremony as always but the 93-year-old Queen was accompanied by her eldest son Prince Charles which seemed to send a subtle message. Prince Charles, 70, will be the next King of England when he takes over from his mother Queen Elizabeth II. While royal insiders have claimed the 93-year-old queen has vowed never to resign from her role, Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall's presence in Parliament today suggested he was being primed to take over. He helped his mother to and from the glossy gold throne from where she delivered her speech. Prince Charles was by his mother's side as she delivered the message written for her the current government outlining its aims for the coming year. The 10-minute speech focused on successfully delivering Brexit as well as access to innovative medicines and creating jobs after leaving the EU. Other policy matters it touched on were voter IDs, Britain's rail network and a pledge to increase time in prison for people convicted of serious violent or sexual offences. The Queen, who arrived at Westminster by carriage wore the George IV diadem throughout, rather than switching into the heavy imperial state crown. The imperial state crown, made of more than 3,000 gemstones and weighing 2 pounds and 13 ounces, was instead carried through the House of Lords on a red and gold cushion and placed on a table alongside the Queen for the duration of her speech. 
It is not the first time the Queen has not worn the imperial state crown during a full ceremonial state opening of Parliament. She was without it in 1952, as the first state opening of her reign fell before her 1953 coronation. Prince Charles' presence beside his mother was not only a clear show of moral support but also a subtle way of getting the British public accustomed to seeing him at key royal events. Queen Elizabeth II is the longest-serving monarch in British history and has been on the throne for 67 years. Even in her 90s the dedicated royal keeps a packed schedule of engagements and shows few signs of slowing on. The Queen's unwavering dedication was neatly summed up earlier this year when she refused help planting a ceremonial tree at a royal engagement. While the Queen shows no sign of stepping down yet it seems Prince Charles' preparation for the role has been ramped up. This summer an Express.co.uk poll asked readers which of the top 10 royals in the immediate line of succession they thought were best suited to take over from the Queen. More than 60% of the 4,000 who took part thought Prince William would make a better king than Prince Charles. The Prince of Wales suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of his son and won just 18% of the votes. The results show that most readers would reject Charles in favor of Prince William with some commenting on how his wife, Kate, Duchess of Cambridge would make a fine queen consort. Prince Charles and Camilla will embark on a week-long tour of New Zealand in November which will mark their third visit to the region.